This is starting his third installment of uh, the uh, Gokiden series. Today's session is what's the third? Uh, uh, end of Awataguchi. End of Awataguchi. Okay. So, uh, Marcus? Okay. As Chuck mentioned, we're going to continue with the Gokiden series. We are now at part three. And I'm just going to show you. Uh, the outline of the Yamashiro tradition and what we already covered so far. So part one, as you all remember, was the earliest Yamashiro. It was the Sancho and the Gocho schools. Then last time we started to go dig into the Abadaguchi school, the founding and the six Abadaguchi brothers, whereas we stopped with the oldest brother and we had a work by uh, the third son is Kante, as you all remember, uh, Kunde Yasu. And today I'm going to wrap up the Awadoguchi school by the other of the six brothers and the main line all the way down to Yoshimitsu. And as you can see here, what we're going to cover next is going to be the Rai school. Then we're going to have the Ayano Kochi school and the Hazabi school. And we're going to have a few more, like the later Sanjo school. Uh, after that and then we gotta go to the next tradition so just as a as a, remi remi uh, as a reminder this were the six of the Gucci brothers all the six sons of the founder Kuni Ie the oldest towards the right and the youngest towards the left and uh, I have mentioned the last time they all uh, displayed different styles which is interesting because what I also pointed out is that the uh, uh, with the later Sanjo and Gocho Smiths, like Sanjo Yoshii and Gocho Kuninaga, we see a trend towards Choji already. But the Abadaguchi Smiths, they returned, they got, uh, they toned the Choji down and returned to more like a Suguha. And it is assumed probably because the Kobe and school was uh, gaining a momentum at this time, and the Abadaguchi masters probably said, okay, we leave the Choji to the Kobe Sen and we go back to. The Yamashiro style Suguha. But interestingly, some of the younger brothers they were very much experimenting with Choshi, but the main line with Kunitomo and his successors they all stayed with the Suguha and Suguha Cho. So these are the guys we're going to talk about today. He's a Kuni, then Kunitsuna, and the main line Smith after, after Kunitomo. Uh, there are many more about the Gucci Smiths. Like I have a whole bunch of, 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 of Smiths from the from period records but hardly any work of those have survived so they can be omitted here i just want to uh, show you the one the kante blades we had last time from kuniyasu which is very classical yeah, very early yamashiro style and then his younger brother kunikiyo in turn he was very much into choji because he was not the one of them he was not our Daguchi main line and so we continue with the second, uh, the second uh, oldest of the six brothers, Abadaguchi Hisakuni. So some say uh, Hisakuni was the best of all Abadaguchi Smiths, which is, yeah, you can argue about that. He is regarded as one of the finest makers of Tanto. One of the Tantos I show later, some say is the best Tanto in existence. And Hisakuni was very, he was like his older brother Kunitomo, very classical Abadaguchi. Very fine uh, Chigane which is described as Nashichi Hada. It's very difficult to find pictures of a Nashichi Hada. It's a very uniformly forged, tightly forged koitame with the, the chinye. It's all, it's very evenly distributed over the blade. And it looks like it resembles the surface of a pear when you slice it. And pear, pear is not nashi in Japanese. That's why they call it Nashichi Hada. So pearl skin Hada. That we see with, with Hisakuni very prominently. This is a touch of Hisakuni, it's a national treasure. It's, as you can see, very elegant, very, uh, it's early Kabakura style, the Koshisori that decreases towards the tip, uh, Kokisaki, and as Ubo and signed. This is the Oshigata to display it. Uh, Subuhacho, very little, uh, very little, uh, undulating in the harmon, very elegant, very refined. You can see a little bit of Kintsuchi. It's all, and it is uh, through and through Nashichi Hada. This is another blade by Hisakuni. You can see a little bit of Kintsuchi already at the base. And it's interesting with this earlier Wataguchi, 
you usually see the kintsuchi and more activity at the, at the, at towards the base. Then here we have uh, uh, Tanto by Hisakuni. This is the Tanto I mentioned. Some say like it's the most beautiful Tanto that exists. Some really, some people love this blade. Uh, very elegant. And again, uh, pay attention to the base. There's a little bit Kunome and this, this characteristic feature we're gonna come across later again, but you can see already early Abataguchi, there's a little bit more activity towards the base, even with the Tanto. And then we come to Abataguchi Kunitsuna, who was the youngest of the, of the six Abataguchi brothers. I wanna, uh, so he was active uh, much later than his, his, his older brothers, and uh, the tradition has it that the, the Hojo reg regent in Kamakura he called him the gold of Kamakura and start making swords there like Bisen, uh, Sukisane and Saburo Kunimune from Bisen. And it's interesting because those guys, when they came to Kamakura, uh, we, uh, we're going to start more, we see more Nie. And we can speculate about why this was. Uh, most likely because of course there was a different steel that didn't bring the same, that didn't bring the steel from Kyoto all the way to Kamakura. And others say the Kamakura Smiths back then they were uh, also instructed by a smith who had come to the new capital from the from the north. So it's a, a lot of uh, the a lot of speculation going on why the Nie, but most likely because they had a different steel and they tried to work with the new steel. That's why we see more Nie. So Ataguchi Kunitsuna, as he was uh, active uh, later, we're gonna enter mid Kamakura already. You can see here the blades get more robust. There's less taper. There is a, a shukisake that tends to ikubi. It's a very stout kisake. And as mentioned, uh, we see a tendency towards nie. And it's also interesting with Kunitsuna. We do have uh, some, even some kunome now. Uh, the hamon is very wide, uh, very prominent hamon, not the suguha that we see with his uh, older brothers and the Abataguchi main line. So that's the famous blade here, the, the Gyobutsu, the Onimaru. That's the Oshigata to it. This is another blade by Kunitsuna. Uh, here again, very the play, pay attention to the shape. It doesn't taper that much anymore. Chukisake and a very stout shape. This is another blade by Kunitsuna. You can see the knee activities here in the Hada. And there's the Sugata of this blade here. A very powerful blade, Kamakura style, no longer Kyoto style. So now we're gonna go from Konitsuna down the, the main line of the Abataguchi, uh, Abataguchi school. And as you can see here, the six brothers, you have to imagine this more like this. It's, it's supposed to be more like tilted because Konitsuna was active more like at the time of Kuniyoshi and Yoshimitsu rather than his older brother Kunitomo. So we're gonna start with the next uh, main line master after Kunitomo is Nori Kuni. Uh, Norikuni, the son of Kunitomo, he stayed with the style that his father created, which is away from Choji, so more back to Suguha. It's a blade of his and very elegant again, not like the Kunitsuna we have seen before. We're gonna go back to the elegant shapes, smaller Kisaki, uh, smaller Hamon, narrow Hamon, Nashichi Hada, and this is the Oshigata to display, as you can see here, is a very, very narrow Hamon, very classical style. And that's another blade of, of Norikuni, the same style. That's the Oshigata to the blade. And I just want to point out when we are at Norikuni, how rare those, all those blades, uh, early about the Gucci, up to the point of Yoshimitsu, this is very rare to come across one like in the wild. So I'm gonna, I, I, I pulled out some figures like Hisakuni and Kunitsuna and Norikuni. Those guys, they all have like just a dozen of chuyos, of which have like uh, a handful made tokuchu. They have like three or two chuyo bichutsuhin. They have like six or three chuyo bunkasai each and maybe one kokuho. So it's very rare. And to come across a, a Hisakuni or Norikuni in the wild is it's pretty rare, so they, they also don't uh, show up at the Daito Kenichi that much. Those earlier about the Gucci Smiths. 
And interesting with Snorri Kuni, we're gonna we're gonna we see more tanto show more tanto appearing. That's a tanto by Nori Kuni. And that's the Oshigata to the Tanto. It's a wider tanto, it's like almost tending to the famous uh, kitchen knife style, the hocho style. But uh, all the characteristics stay the same. Nashichi Hada, uh, Sukuhacho with a little bit of Midare, very elegant, and with a uh, lot, of, lot of beautiful knee activities. And uh, Nori Kuni was followed by his son Kuni Yoshi, and there are more Kuni Yoshi blades uh, extant. So we have Kuni Yoshi, I looked them up, he has like 40 Chuyo and 17 Tokubetsu Chuyo. He has five Chuyo Bichutsu Hin and five Chuyo Bunkasai. And Kuniyoshi is in, insofar interesting, you will see here, because he had a very layered approach in the, in the Hamon. He has a, very, a lot of uh, Yuba Shiri and Nichiuba, and this was more or less the only Arataguchi Smiths who did this. So if you have a Kante and you see a lot of Nichiuba and Yuba Shiri for Arataguchi, you can go right away to Kuniyoshi, because he was mostly the only guy who did this of the Arataguchi Smiths and very prominently. Here too, all this Yubashiri and Nichiba goes into the Boshi, Sanchuba even like three, three layers of Ha, and as, and as you can see again here, Kinsuchi towards the base. This is another Kuniyoshi with the same activities you can see here along the Ha, very unique. And that's another blade of his, so you can just, you can see the shape. And this is one of his most famous works. It's an outlier. It's the famous uh, Naki Kitsune. It's called The Howling Fox. It's one of the early Hiratsukuri Uchigadana that has survived, that was made for higher ranking warriors. And again, Kuniyoshi's features are prominent there, all the layered approach of the Ha. <coughs> and Kuniyoshi, again, we see more Tanto. And, uh, Obviously, activities stay the same, layered approach. Here you see a wider blade in the, in the kitchen knife style. And uh, I just wanted to show you how this all looks like on the real blades. That's pictures from our dear friend Darcy, who should rest in peace. He was, he, as you all know, he passed away last month. And this is a, a Kuniyoshi, Kuniyoshi Dokubetsu Chuyo. That's, you can see a little bit what I what tried to describe earlier with the Nashichi Hada, which is very fine and extremely uniform. And here you see the layered approach over the Ha, how it looks like in real life. And also here towards the tip, all this Nichiba and Yubashiri, that's how it looks like on the real blade. And you can see here too as well. So then we come to Abatagochi, Abatagochi Yoshimits, who was the last of the mainland masters. and. After him, the Abataguchi school faded out. It didn't make it very much into the, the Nabokcho period. Uh, we don't know why, but probably because they were overshadowed by the Rai school who take over at this point, which we're gonna talk about next. So Abataguchi too, he was the mainline master. He stayed with the, with the Sukuha and elegant style. You can see here blades, this is interesting. It was supposed to be the only sign longsword of Yoshimitsu in existence, uh, called Ichigo Hitofuri. Uh, Hitofuri means uh, one blade, and the Ichigo is like the once in a lifetime, uh, one chance, one blade, because it was supposed to be the only signed blade by his. Until 30 years ago, there was another, so that's the Oshigata of the, before it was shortened. And uh, until 30 years ago, this blade was discovered. It's another signed uh, Yoshimitsu longsword. It's a Kodachi. Samaso or Uchigatana, this remains up to discussion. That's the Oshigata to it. It has obviously went right to Tokubetsu Chuyo. A very elegant blade. I mean, very, very elegant in terms of Hamon, in terms of Hamon, but the blade itself is, is wide and it's stout and magnificent. And here I want to point out the characteristics of, of Abataguchi Yoshimitsu Tanto, because they are very, uh, if you can uh, pay attention to this, you can easily kante him like on, a, on in the magazine. As I pointed out, more activities at the base. You can have a little bit Konome, some Kintsuchi. And then it's interesting because towards the tip, his Ha narrows down. It's not because the blade has lost material, but it narrows down and then it gets wider again. And in the tip, you have Nie that spill down 
into the chi, and this is called nien or kui sagare. Uh, kui, kui sagare means to bite on. It's like it meant, it, you can translate it as to hang on, to cling to. But kui zagare is basically what the you know what a pit bull will do: bite something and hang down. That's what what kui zagare means. So the nie bite into the boshi, but hang hang down into the chi. And also very uh, typical for Yoshimitsu and the whole Awataguchi school is if you have horimono that are close to the mune with the rice school and other Awataguchi smiths, they, they're just a hint more into the chi. But if you have horimono like Gomabashi that are very close to the mune, you will see it's a characteristic feature of the Awataguchi school. Another interesting feature of Yoshimitsu is that his signature is very elegant. It's like a, uh, a brush style, calligraphy style. And if you have in a Kante a description, it's signed with two characters, which are elegant. And you go towards Abataguchi and you see, okay, it must be Yoshimitsu. Because if you point out in the Kante, it's only one character that is off or different, then it's not Yoshimitsu because he's a both characters are elegant. Uh, here I have another uh, Kanto by Yoshimitsu, uh, National Treasure. Uh, as you can see, this very elegant uh, Kamakura style Kanto with a little bit of Uchisori, perfect proportions. That's uh, Yoshigata. Yoshimitsu, they have the features again, a little bit Konome at the base and a little bit Nie in the Boshi. And Yoshimitsu made different style Kanto. He made the elegant Kamakura style, but also the, those uh, white uh, kitchen knife style. With, uh, but the same features, Kukunome at the Hamachi and the Nia in the Boshi. And again, look at the at the He, it's very close to the Mune. It's as close you can put it to the Mune because it's limit better by the, limited by the Nakago. And that's a color photo of this plate. It's also of a beautiful steel. And I just want to uh, wrap, uh, sum up the Heidei Awadaguchi characteristics here. Elegant, but also stout Tsugata. Shukisake and Hoshisori that decreases uh, not so much towards the tip, so we're gonna get a little bit of towards Tori Sori. Then we have a dance harder, beautiful Chinie that appears as Nashichi. We have a Sukuha based harmony in Konie Deki. We're gonna have the Nie increase with certain smiths like Kunitsuna. Uh, the Ha is mixed with Choji and smaller Komidare, with, and also Gunome with, with Kunitsuna and, and not the mainline guys. We have, the, with, with the exception, exception of Kuniyoshi, we have uh, the fewer horizontal, horizontal hataraki, and we have also the fewer natural hardening, like in the Yubashiri and Tobiaki, as we see with the early Yamashiro Smiths. So the Abataguchi Smiths uh, toned that down, except for Kuniyoshi, and the Tanto increase in number. So if you have a Kamakura period Tanto that is early, you can go with uh, Abadaguchi because we don't see this with Gocho and Sancho schools. And if the Tanto is later, it's probably, uh, it's like more likely a Rai. So with this, I wanted to wrap it up today. Uh, I apologize if it was a little bit uh, confusing today. <laughs> I was quite busy the last few weeks. And, but I'm happy to answer any question before we're gonna do our little Kante later. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, yeah. The Yoshimitsu signatures, you have the three signatures next to each yep. other. Okay. Can go back. And you said that they're yeah, right there, they're very elegant and mm -hmm. unlike, but they not precisely look identical, you know, you no. know what I mean? So the early signatures, they didn't pay so much attention to, the hand was the same, but you know, they didn't have to really like match yeah. size and yeah. layout in the beginning, like later on. Yeah, but. Uh, here you have to with Yoshimitsu this already uh, deliberate how the characters are composed. So it's not like this is a, a naive uh, like signature. It's just uh, uh, naively chiseled. Yoshimitsu already paid attention to calligraphic like a, a flow. Like you can see here the, the little curves and how the, yeah. the box is shaped. So he already paid attention to the details. And it's, it's interesting because there's the theory that he was actually a nobleman who moved to Kyoto and then became a swordsmith. So he might have had Cal cal calligraphic training. Okay, so because when you look on the right <laughs> signature, right, yeah. you see the, the kanji on the right is, mm -hmm. is a little bit more curved and uh, opposed to the whatever is on the left, which yeah. is more like, you know, yeah, right. with the edges. But it's, it's, it's within the changes mm -hmm. of his career. Okay. And 
you can see the same as you can, on top here you know have and the Mitsu character he did this little this little hook and the, yeah. and the top so that that's what he mostly did throughout his career thank you okay thank you anybody else are we good you know i have a question mm -hmm. i remember kuni mitsu uh, kuni mitsu kunio telling me that the early kodo smiths weren't that literate in signing their swords while in shinto the smiths mm -hmm. were more literate they signed their own swords the kodo smiths mm -hmm. hired somebody to sign is that true there is the theory yeah that the kodo smiths or some of the kodo smiths had had guys who just did the signature for them but uh we just wow. we don't know we do not know it's i mean it would remain to be seen if a document appears which st states that someone did the signature for someone else but it, it's a it's possible but we don't know <coughs> oh, that's interesting picture the industrial signatures like for me <coughs> and obviously when somebody when one studies for a long time then then you know how the signature changed because mm -hmm. you see it based on the yeah. source that they look at it but out of like hands sometimes one would think that you know there's something funny going on here mm -hmm. Yep. Was there a story a few slides back? You had the the howling fox. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was Uchi Is it, or uh, yep. this one? Uh, was there a story behind the name? And I also was wondering what kind of uh, he that has on mm -hmm. it. It looks kind of interesting. Yeah, it has this double he that ends in this abrupt. Let me see. Here we are. Oh yeah, yeah. there we are. Yeah, it's a very unique ending of the he mm -hmm. with this curve uh, there are a few others known but it's very rare and uh, to my knowledge the nickname of why it's called howling foxes is, is, is not it's unknown okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's also interesting because it's signed in his full name with his full honorary <laughs> title it's signed in, I guess uh, Sahyoe no Cho Fujiwara Kuniyoshi so it's like a full it was a, a one-off special order piece. Hmm. Marcus, I noticed that mm -hmm. uh, the Mitsumune has been highlighted there. Oh yeah, this is the, yeah, that's a Mitsumune. Uh, that's uh, uh, Tanobe, luckily he always does the Mune in his Oshigata, so that's why. Is, is Mitsumune common in the Awataguchi school or with the Smith? Or? Uh, it's, it's common, it's like almost 50-50 Iori or Mitsu. But on Tanto, Tanto probably more like 70 30 towards Mitsumone. Okay. Yeah, but it's common. But if, if there's no Mitsumone, it doesn't rule out that it's not a work. Mm. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you.